Battleborn had one of the most catastrophic launches ever seen by a AAA studio, from direct competition with one of the biggest names in the gaming industry, to decision making so terrible you could almost consider it self-sabotage. And that led to an absolute nosedive in player count just one month after release, but some people were speculating that the game was bound to fail no matter what, while others were saying that a little foul play was involved and that's why Battleborn never stood a chance. And I've been a fan of hero shooters for the longest time and even I didn't know just how bad things were going for Battleborn and how they won the award for one of the most poorly aged Twitter callouts of all time. To understand what happened, we have to go back to when Battleborn was first announced in 2014. Gearbox Software was making a multiplayer hero shooter with elements of MOBAs or multiplayer battle arenas, so not your traditional Overwatch Paladins gameplay. You had your staple of unique heroes, obviously, but you also had an in-match leveling system where you can unlock different abilities, and by spending like five minutes in the game, you can pretty much figure out what the objectives were in each game, which were anything from domination to destroying an enemy sentry before they destroy yours, to just like shoving minions down the enemy base. It was a pretty exciting idea because multiplayer shooters were just starting to pop off thanks to games like Team Fortress 2, so their time on entering the market was just perfect. But there was a slight problem with how things went down here because Gearbox Software was having trouble trying to sell you the idea of what Battleborn really was. President Randy Pitchfork at the time stated it was a genre-fused video game and one of the most ambitious projects they'd ever created, which was accompanied by an announcement trailer that gave you absolutely no context to what the video game was actually about. Which, by the way, if you're gonna drop a trailer with all these fancy animations, at least tell me what is it that you're trying to sell me, because you look at that and it's like when you watch a trailer for a movie and all you see is like action sequences and nothing about what the story really is about. That's how much information they gave you off of that. So they were pitching the idea of a shooter game, that we know, but was it like a first person shooter, or a third person, an extraction shooter, a battle royale? nobody really knew. And this particular problem was something that would follow them along all the way up to the game's release, where the game was marketed as a hero shooter with MOBA elements, but hindsight being 2020, you can kind of see it was more of a MOBA with hero shooter elements. And that distinction is very, very important because that determines who your competition is. And more importantly, the players know kind of what to expect out of the game because one of the biggest blunders that the Battleborn marketing team made was pitching the game as a direct competition to the most anticipated hero shooter that would be released in 2016, Overwatch. And while they still both shared elements of gameplay and both had fun, bright visuals, the MOBA elements in Battleborn really made it an entirely different experience from Overwatch, and it was something more like playing Smite or League of Legends, so they really just had no business getting into a pissing contest with Blizzard and Overwatch. And that led them to making one of the biggest and stupidest call-out tweets of all times, calling out Overwatch directly, which would end up aging like absolute spoiled milk because to this day, Battleborn is shut down and Overwatch is... Well, I wouldn't really call it thriving, but it's it's there. <laughs> And that decision just let you know that the marketing team at Battleborn probably had no idea who the target audience was for their game. And what Blizzard ended up doing in response is that they decided to release Overwatch a little bit early. You see, Battleborn was supposed to launch May 3rd, 2016, and Overwatch was going to launch a little bit later, but they decided to do an open beta on March 3rd. 2016. And that open beta from Overwatch drew in 10 million players that completely killed off any possible momentum Battleborn might have had. Now remember, these two games, completely different audiences. And let's pretend for a moment that it's, we're back in 2016. You have both Overwatch and Battleborn advertising towards you. Battleborn was a hefty $60 on release, with some features and heroes locked behind gameplay progression, and on top of that, a $20 season pass. So you paid for the game and then you had to work to unlock the heroes you actually wanted to play as. Meanwhile, Overwatch on release was only $40 and you had all the heroes, all the weapons, all the maps, everything was immediately available for you and no season pass at all. And all future maps and heroes that would come afterwards would be immediately available and free to play, you know, except for what they did in Overwatch 2. Let's just not talk about Overwatch 2 right now. And the progression system was literally just leveling up to unlock loot boxes for cosmetics, you know, there wasn't like grinding to be able to unlock all the features that the game had to offer, which is, you know, fine if it's like a, a single player game, but if you're trying to sell me a competitive game, you want to have all the competitive aspects from the get-go. And after reading all those facts, the option between the two that you're going to pick and buy and play was obviously Overwatch, let's be honest here. 
So moving on from all the marketing blunders, Battleborn was still in hot water. It was still in a very tough spot in terms of marketing and competition because here you have a game trying to sell itself as an Overwatch competitor, which is already one very tough roadblock. But on top of that, when you realize what the actual competition is, it gets even worse. Because the main competitive mode in Battleborn is called Incursion. The objective is to just destroy their Sentinel before they destroy yours. And if that sounds familiar, it's because those are the MOBA elements that you see in Dota 2 and League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm. You know, all the games that are actually in the same genre as Battleborn, not Overwatch. And here's the kicker, all of those games are completely free to play and Battleborn you had to pay a hefty $60 for. Meanwhile, Overwatch really felt like it had everything going for it at launch. It had extremely polished gameplay and servers, a diverse cast of heroes, and it was under the Blizzard umbrella, which was only known to throw out bangers at the time. We don't talk about present Overwatch or present Blizzard, that's trash, but we're talking about the, the past, you know, back when things were actually good. A lot of Blizzard slander in this channel, yes. And to talk about launch day itself, Battleborn had what you could call a catastrophic launch with server issues. The game was crashing multiple times and people were struggling to even play the game in the first place. When you managed to actually get into the game though, the visuals and the characters were fun. And it did have an interesting co-op campaign that was heavily Borderlands influenced since Gearbox Software is the mastermind behind those two games. And the future DLC that came out, I didn't actually get the chance to play it myself, but from what I read was actually extremely fun and redeeming for the game. But again, just like how I mentioned earlier, everybody was focused on the multiplayer competitive aspect of the game. So all that fancy extra stuff that came afterwards was unfortunately just glossed over. And the worst part of it all is that the game was good, but it wasn't great. And during a time in gaming where everything that was coming out was just absolute bangers, and you're competing in the most aggressive market that's out there, the shooter game market, you know, if your game isn't perfectly polished from the get-go, unfortunately it just gets forgotten. The people just didn't have reasons to stick around in Battleborn, because everyone was just moving on to Overwatch, and the player base unfortunately didn't even last a month. The game died so ridiculously fast, and Gearbox did try to win them over with stuff like DLC, like I mentioned earlier, and they eventually even made the game free to play, all just to try to lure people back, but even then they still managed to mess that up somehow, because they labeled their free-to-play game as a free trial. So as the consumer, you reading a game that's free trial, you just think that, oh, I only get to play it temporarily, none of them really got the message that the game was entirely free to play. So what a way to shoot yourself in the foot there, man. So after Gearbox saw the player number just dwindle in Battleborn, they decided to just shift focus away from the project and move on towards bigger and better things, like for example, Borderlands 3, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, you know, things that actually popped off for them, and the more things that popped off, the more reasons they had to just leave Battleborn in the dust. To the point that they just stopped updating and giving out fresh content for the game, and that unfortunately just led to finishing off the rest of the player base that was left, and the servers eventually shut down back in 2021. So it's unfortunate to see a game that just crashes and burns and dies, you know, and it just shuts down and there's no way to access it anymore. But unfortunately, that is what happens when you enter the life service market. And if you enter the first person shooter life service market, your game either skyrockets into popularity or you're just fading into obscurity. And unfortunately, that's what happened with Battleborn. So yeah, that's really what I wanted to talk about today. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.